Hey there, Pickens Chemistry. So this is gonna be the first of a series of videos about the quantum atom. And I wanna thank Dr. Eric Zuckerman, who was a former colleague, uh, still a current colleague, but we used to teach together at, at Augusta University. And he was the uh, one who originally came up with this particular approach and to teaching quantum numbers. And so I wanna remind everybody about light first. In fact, the electromagnetic spectrum. And that when we look at these waves in the electromagnetic spectrum, they have variables or quantities that we can measure such as wavelength or frequency or energy. And that the wavelength is increasing on this diagram as we go to the left. You can see here the waves are getting longer between the crusts. And that as we go to the right here, as the crusts come closer together, more of this wave will pass the same position in the same amount of time. And so the frequency increases, and this is the same direction in which the energy increases for this wave. And that we have two big equations here. We have C equals lambda nu, which is the speed of light, 2.998 times 10 to the eighth meters per second equals wavelength times frequency. And the other big equation we have here is that energy equals H nu, where E is energy, H is Planck's constant, which is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joule seconds, and that that Planck's constant then is multiplied by frequency. And we discussed light because all of this stuff going on with light, this is the main way that we have to interact with electrons and with atoms. And that we can put light into electrons or put light into atoms and see what happens. And we can also observe the col colors of light, the types of light that come out of atoms in order to understand what happened with the energy that we put into them. And as you saw in the gizmo on the Bohr hydrogen or the Bohr model of the atom, the introduction, you could put different energies of light or different colors of light through a sample. So for here, as an example, we have uh, the hydrogen atom and the hydrogen atom consists of a single proton and a single electron. And we have three examples here where we can shine different colors or different energies of light onto this sample. And if we shine 10.1 electron volt energy light onto this sample, there's really two things that can happen here. And those two things are that that light can continue through. And in which case we would see all three of these photons that are shown coming through or that light can be absorbed. And in the second case here, I show that there's one missing because that one photon was absorbed. And in the third case, all three photons again pass through. So notice that to be absorbed, the light has to be at a specific or discrete energy. And that energy actually has to match the energy involved with the electronic transitions within the atom. And so when the electron absorbs that energy, the electron becomes excited. So electron absorbs energy and becomes excited. And then there's a few other things that can happen. So also in the Gizmo, you saw that there was a different way of showing the atom and that you could show the atom as a circular, spherical kind of shape and the electron energy levels could be rings around the atom. But we can also translate this into a more vertical kind of drawing where we show the energy levels with the N values and N is equals one would be the lowest energy level for the electron. And in the hydrogen atom, that exists at an energy of negative 13.6 electron volts. And that for that electron to move, to be excited into the second energy level from negative 13.6 electron volts, 
to negative 3.40 electron volts, it does require an input of energy of 10.2 electron volts, which is the reason why the example I showed had 10.1, 10.2, and 10.3 electron volts. Notice, however, that when you look at the energy levels, you also see that that electron could be excited into a different position. That electron could go from n equals one up to n equals three, or from n equals one up to n equals four, et cetera, et cetera. And there's many more levels there. Although if you go to an infinitely high level, that's considered to be zero energy. We'll actually talk about that in the next quick video clip. But for now, we want to look at what else can happen after the electron is excited. And after the electron is excited, let me make sure I'm back on the right page to share. After the electron is excited, depending on where it goes in terms of energy levels, if this is n equals one and it goes up to n equals two, and so the electron started out here and then it got promoted up as it was excited up to a higher energy, now that electron could fall, but for that electron to fall, it has to emit light. And so when the excited electron relaxes back into a lower energy level, it emits light equal to the energy absorbed. And what we see is that when we have multiple energy levels, n equals one, n equals two, n equals three, n equals four, and let's do an n equals five, when we have multiple energy levels, there are multiple electronic transitions that could occur from that n equals one level. In this case, there are four different transitions. This would correspond to four energies of light absorbed. which in turn means that when each of those excited electrons relaxes, they could each give off one single photon of those same energies. And so the absorption spectrum that we see for gases, where there are black lines representing colors or types of light that have been absorbed, these perfectly match just about the emission spectrum that we see when we excite these electrons using electricity or heat, like as in the case of fireworks or neon lamps. And we see that the uh, energies of light given off by a particular atom match with the energies of light that are absorbed. We also see that there are multiple paths that can take here and that all of these are equal in energy in the total amount of energy to the total amount of energy absorbed. So if you go from the n equals one up to n equals five, you could individually jump down from five to four, then four to three, then three to two, then two to one, or you could jump through any one of those more levels at the same time. So you could go from five to three, and then from three back down to one but it still equals the same amount of energy transferred. As a final example of the correspondence between emission and absorption spectrum, here's a picture of an element. It doesn't state which one it would be, but the emission spectrum, you can see that there are only specific colors of light being given off by this particular sample. You see red, yellow, two shades of green, a very light blue, a uh, darker blue and then a violet and it is a little bit harder to pick out the violet and that could just be because of the intensity of that line. But when you look below that at the absorption spectrum, this is the absorption, the missing light whenever the light from a continuous spectrum passes through 
a sample of that particular at atom or that particular element. And that's it for this first video. Be sure to check out the second video that follows this. So in this first video, we summarized how electromagnetic radiation, light is the way that we can put, get, uh, put energy into and out of atoms or electrons, and that we can get information about the atoms and the electrons based off of the colors of light that are absorbed or emitted by our samples. Also that the electrons exist in energy levels and that those electrons can be excited when they absorb light and they relax when they emit light. And that the amount of light or the energy of light that is absorbed or emitted is discrete. It depends on the type of atom that you're looking at. And we'll see in the next video some different energies that can come from electronic transitions.